<sighs> Here we go again. You just got bamboozled by clickbait again. But look, I did it for a good reason. I did it so you don't get tricked by low quality SEO news again. Let me give some context to all of this. So this morning, Mark and I had our 9 a.m. call with our team and they reported that a bunch of people were talking about an article that was published on an SEO news site uh, talking about the death of guest posting. So we went to our SEO groups and we went to other SEO groups as well to see what people were talking about and there it was spreading faster than the coronavirus it seems. Mark went digging into this for an hour and he sent me a message on Slack. My god, this, sh this is a shit show. Uh, I can show you the message here. So here's what we're gonna try to do here today. We source the story back to the original story and we try to look into the actual facts and the information and we actually highlight how the information got distorted as the story was passed on to people. And you will see it's quite entertaining and quite hilarious. So if you want the full story and you want to see if SEOs are going crazy again or if guest posting is really dead, stay tuned. Let's get started. Welcome to the Authority Hacker Podcast. I'm your host, Gail Breton, and together with my business partner, Mark. Hey, guys. We are talking about the recent wave of outbounding penalties that Google has been ramping up lately and people are talking more and more about and people are kind of linking these to get po guest posting sometimes for good reasons, sometimes not so for so good reasons and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about uh, but before we get started with the episode if you are not subscribed yet do go and subscribe to us you can find us on all the audio podcast platforms so Spotify, iTunes, uh, what else? Anything really like Google all Podcast <laughs> Google podcast, um, but we're also on YouTube actually. So if you're on YouTube, uh, subscribe, there's a button below, uh, hit the notification bell as well so that uh, you don't miss any of our videos. We actually have a live chat with people who listen to the podcast when we release the podcast on YouTube. So if you want to interact with us as well, uh, I actually every week I am on the chat just chatting with people who follow us. It's kind of fun. So if you want to join for that, uh, go for that. And if you follow us on YouTube, you won't miss that. So let's uh, stop the promo now and let's get started with the podcast. Mark, what happened? Oh my God. So <laughs> today was the ultimate lesson in how news slash fake news spreads around the internet. Uh, and I, I feel like I got a very interesting lesson on it. Um, for the first time in an area which I know quite a bit about. So you and I, we've been doing online marketing for about 10, 11 years each now. And yeah. we've done a lot of guest posting. We've worked with clients. We've built our own sites. We've had penalties before. We've worked around them. We've built good links. We've built bad links. We know, you know, there are certainly people that know more than us, but we know a fair amount about what's going on about the landscape of search engine optimization. And I read, I woke up this morning, uh, I actually read, saw it in bed, you know, turn, turn off my alarm, check Facebook, of course. And there's a bunch, the algorithm has, has given it to me, shown it to me first. And there's this article from uh, Search Engine Journal. And the title of the article is Google Penalties on Guest Post Articles. Okay, so. Okay. The assumption one would would make about that. By the way, I wanna I wanna be clear. In our courses, we advocate people to guest posting, right? So that look, we're also clear on like our position so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so essentially, what happened was someone's site got an unnatural outbound links warning. So that's a manual action from Google. That individual mm -hmm. made some assumptions about what was going on. They posted these assumptions on a Facebook group, which is SEO Signals Lab. Uh, the sc there's a screenshots of their um, webmaster tools and a screenshot of the of the actual notice. I'll read it out for you in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, Search Engine Journal, someone at Search Engine Journal saw that and wrote an article about it. That article, perhaps misunderstood slash slightly distorted, intentionally or unintentionally, I don't know what was going on quite significantly uh -huh. and we'll get into the specifics of this in a minute but when you actually look at it it's quite hilarious uh a lot of people obviously shared that article it's quite uh um sensationalized kind of it's it's quite uh it's just like clickbaity as fuck let's just say that and it's like it's not that it's, it's not angled that. in a way it's not just it's an angled in a way that appeals to people's fears you know because a lot of people use guest posting and so a lot of people pay attention to a headline like this. Here's, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's the H2s from the article. I'm gonna read them out to you. All right. The first yeah. one is outbound link, <coughs> outbound link penalty. Second one is 
guest post manual action from Google. The third one is, is Google going after guest posts or paid guest posts? Question mark. The third one, no official statement from Google. The fourth yeah. one, should you continue accepting guest posts? Question mark. Yeah. So, yeah. pretty inflammatory. It's nice for yeah. Pretty inflammatory. Anyway, this article comes out. A bunch of people share it. A bunch of people uh, will post it on a, on a group. On uh, We have pe- people post it in our, uh, our Facebook groups. Many others as well. People post it on their profiles on Twitter. And they'll often put a little comment around it like, is, is guest posting dead? Or what does this mean? Or what's going on here? Or uh, help, what do I do? Should I still accept guest posts? Yeah, yeah. And uh, everyone's like, oh my God, your post then, is outdated. You should. Uh, you should and then you know. a lot of people who didn't actually read the article will then comment with the assumption about what the article is about, often missing the point. Um, and even the people in this case who did read the article they're still reading essentially misinformation. The headlines, yeah. And they're and basing they're their... just read the headlines often, you know? They're basing their comment... I mean, the, re- the whole article is, is based on yeah, yeah. like misinformation. Uh, we'll get into that in a second so as to why that is. So you have a lot of people commenting on various levels of the incorrect kind of sequence of events that, that, that followed and commentary that followed and then people commenting on those comments and... It basically, that's why I said this is a shit show, uh, because it, it, it is. Uh, and this all occurred because there's a lack of critical sense by a few key individuals in this chain. Uh, and, and, and certainly uh, a lot of people further down the chain who, you know, probably through no fault of their own, because you, you see an article on uh, Search Engine Journal, which is supposedly a fairly reputable uh, cert, uh, site in the, the SEO realm, although that's a debate as well to have. Uh, I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't, honestly, like, I don't read a Search Engine Journal, and it's like, if you're an advanced SEO, like, apart from, like, the occasional news, maybe you might be interested, but, like, um, like the rest of the account is pretty uh, surface level, and I know for a fact people like sell links on this site. Like it's like, you know, it's infiltrated. You know, <laughs> we'll get into the motivations that different parties might have later in this this episode uh, to 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 give you a bit of context to that as well. Um, and one thing I will say is there are generally a lot of beginners, newbies people who maybe haven't seen uh, a sensationalized story such as this before yeah. reacting to it with, with a lot of fear, with a lot of doubt, with a lot of uh, kind of concern really about what to do. Should they keep guest posting? Should they keep accepting guest posting? Uh, guest posts on their site rather. And yeah, I want to kind of address, peel all the layers of this story back and get back to the root of what actually happened here. So we can provide you with the information about what happened and you can make your own mind up about what's going on. And I'm pretty sure that when you read or hear the facts of what actually happened here, you're going to have a different point of view than what you currently have if you've, if you've already seen the story. All right, stop promising, stop delivering, okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay let's get started here. I think enough teasing. Okay. So I think the, the way it started is like a post on SEO Signals Lab, right? Um, and I think uh, I'll, I'll just throw a screenshot if you're on the video. I'll just throw a screenshot on this, uh, so you guys get to see it. Uh, but basically, like someone received that thing, that message from Google in Webmaster's Console, and essentially it says uh, you have be your outbound links have been penalized. What is quite interesting though is um, his traffic is not down at all, right? It's just uh, the external links from his site just don't seem to help other websites' rankings. Um, and actually, the fun part is I actually went to find him and I chatted with him uh, like a couple hours ago. And uh, so I asked him just three questions. He didn't have that much time. Um, but the first one, I was like, are you a link seller? Uh, to which he answered, no, I'm not a link seller. And I'm like, so you didn't charge for this post? And he's like, yeah, I charged for this post. Um, so they, they, they were essentially uh, do for paid links here. Um, and then I was like, oh, how do you think Google found this site? And uh, this kid didn't really know, but uh, he says he doesn't promote guest posting on his site and that the, the link was a branded anchor, te- uh, branded anchor text in relevant content. I don't know what the site is, so I can't really judge it myself. That's, that's just the answer I got here. 
Uh, and then I was asking like how his traffic went, and he actually said his traffic is up 30% week on week right now. So it doesn't seem like his site's traffic went down for all matters and purposes. It's only the people who link to who he links to that are not getting uh, as much of a boost in their rankings. Not really his site being affected in terms of traffic, basically. That would make sense because so this is this is not an inbound link penalty. This is an outbound link penalty, meaning that I know. But like the question, should you still accept guest posts, becomes kind of irrelevant at this point. Well, right. I want to. I want to wind the clock back even further. How do we know this All is right. like guest posting? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think the thing is like guest posting is such a white term. I mean, I don't call guest posting. I don't call it guest posting when you paid, right? I call it paid links. Um, so, and and I know. How, how do we know like, it's about these specific links? So, like, how how do we know here? If you read the, because he the, he I kindly posted a screenshot of. The message from Google. I'm going to read it out to you now. The subject is okay. unnatural outbound links from, and then his site is uh, um, blurred out. Violate Google Webmaster guidelines to webmaster mm -hmm. of domain. Google has detected a pattern of links from your site to other sites that is either unnatural or irrelevant. This pattern attempts to artificially boost other sites' rankings in Google search results. Such unnatural rankings would cause search results to show preference for results not relevant to the user's actual query. It also violates Google Webmaster guidelines. Therefore, we are discounting the trust in links on your site. The mm -hmm. manual, this manual action has been applied to domain.com. So uh, to fix this, remove the unnatural links on your site and file a reconsideration request. After we determine that, after we determine that you have complied with our guidelines, we will remove this manual action. Here's how to fix this problem. Identify unnatural links on your site. Look for links that were added to your site in exchange for some type of compensation, like money, goods, services, or reciprocal links. Two, remove the use, or remove or use nofollow on these links. The nofollow attribute allows you to tell Google not to crawl a specific link. Three, submit a reconsideration request. Okay, where does it mention guest posting? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So um, I guess, I guess he assumed that it is guest posting. So when I talked to him, actually, one thing I didn't mention is he basically told me it's an affiliate site that hasn't been doing very well with the latest updates. And as a result, he was trying to monetize in other ways by selling selling posts on his site or like selling links on his sites, basically. Okay, okay, but just back up a second there. So what we what I just read out, there was no mention of guest posting. No. So here is the post that this individual made on SEO Signals Lab initially. I'm going to read it out to you. Google started a campaign against sites that are accepting guest post articles. Okay. One of my sites have been hit by the manual penalty and the message basically says, and then he puts quotation marks, but he's paraphrasing here. So he's kind of putting together a message which he thinks Google is essentially saying, Ah, see, here, it's, see. here it says, we have detected that some of your articles are guest posts, dot, dot, dot. We have disabled your authority for your outbound links. Please set your outbound links to no follow and submit a review request. Okay, right. If, if you compare that to what I just read out before, what the actual message said, there's quite some difference in there. Yeah, yeah. Next. Important, th this is still him, him talking. Important facts here. My site has no mention that we accept guest posts anywhere. All guest posts were using informative content and branded anchor. The site only posted 15 guest posts in the last four months and all guest posts have been mixed with other content of ours. The penalty doesn't affect uh, our site tra uh, traffic. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about, uh, is Google targeting guest posting, guest posting in general? Is it one of the strategies? Are guest posts all gonna become no follow in future? Bit of kind of, well, um, scaremongering. I don't know if that's the right yeah, word. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm not sure if I should say that, but like um, I'm friends with him on Facebook now that we talked, and uh, a lot of his timeline is quite similar. Okay, so we have here a situation where this this person's received this notice from Google, which has no mention of guest posting. He's made an assumption that it's specifically about guest posting uh, yep. and he's basically um, put that in the post so that's one thing mm -hmm. what happened next is that search engine journal someone at search engine journal uh, read that the author of the post is Roger Monty. Roger Monty yeah so Roger wrote what this individual sa said and where this individual has 
paraphrased, so remember the, the quotation marks I said just a second ago. So what he wrote, not what Google wrote, the author of the search engine journal article thought that that was a quote from Google. They thought that yeah, Google yeah. has said that. So they wrote this article under the assumption that that was a copy paste quote, what Google said. Um, and they, the second H2, as I read out before, guest post manual action from Google. Initially, they wrote the following. They wrote, the publisher reported that the manual action email said, and then that, that paraphrase, which I said. So this is what's going through the mind of the person who wrote this, this article when he wrote, wrote it. Mm -hmm. What happened this morning was particularly interesting. Glenn Alsop, AKA Viper Chill, who runs the SEO blueprint, he noticed this and he noticed, hey, there's a discrepancy here. This isn't what Google said. This is what the guy was paraphrasing. So Glenn wrote to Roger and said, hey, this is, you, you've, you've made a mistake here. This is a paraphrase. So upon clear information, uh, remember that the um, original, that the person that this happened to said that the message basically says, and then in quotation marks, yeah, yeah. he has a screenshot of what it's the message his own interpretation. actually says. There's yeah. zero doubt whatsoever that this person is paraphrasing here, right? And when that was pointing at, pointed out to the author of this article, Roger Monty, instead of saying, this is paraphrase, he wrote possibly a paraphrase, yeah. which to me is like just one of the most disingenuous things you could so possibly yeah. do because yeah. you've written an article with a, a slant, fair enough, you based on an assumption which you had you had made uh when you've been proven that that's not the case or you know you've or you've obviously made a mistake and anyone can objectively see that from the from the post and seo signals lab rather than change the article delete the article rewrite the article you add this possibly a paraphrase bit as if that kind of uh gets you off the hook or or makes what what's what's happened here okay and it's just it, it's absolutely ridiculous uh that the i mean the editorial standards here are are atrocious. really low yeah yeah, yeah. We, i mean it, making mistakes is okay i think it's like we've made mistakes in the past right there, there's cases where we drop reviews on services and we say things that actually were proven to not be true yep and and also like for example matthew Edward, i talked about this uh, in his interview and uh you know we do what we can to try and fix it in the best way possible matthew spent fifteen thousand dollars in advertising a, the post that he fixed after so that he could like essentially make it right in terms of information. Uh, and for us, same, like we put like massive disclaimers like we were wrong on this article and we've left them to this date on these articles where we were wrong. Um, so I think being wrong is okay. It's more about how you react to being wrong and that's kind of the problem here, especially when a lot of people just don't read that stuff and like they just read the headlines and it just spreads like wildfire and then we go on our Facebook group people are like oh guest posts out there I don't know what to do running around like headless chickens not knowing what to do and uh and it's uh, it's on the it's on the author of the article like uh, for not for not fixing it to be honest uh and uh, and and it's it's just making the industry worse in my opinion this this went so far that uh, SEO Roundtable today reached out to Google to to say, "Are you? Is there a campaign of, uh, I just said of no, yeah. targeting guest posting?" And so they they now have an article today. Google confirms no <laughs> recent campaign against unnatural links. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, what's his name? Uh, da, da, da. John Muller. Gary. Il Il oh, yes. no, Gary. Oh, so yeah. He Iles, was in a, he, he was in the Valley when we were there actually. Yeah. Yeah, so he said it's not the case, and uh, it's funny as well. Like a lot of um, like more black hat people, PBN people, etc., came out on Twitter as well. So like Cyrus Shepard tweeted that, and uh, they're like, "That's kind of weird that you guys, you white hat SEO guys, just discovered that Google's been doing this for like five years or something, and like we've been receiving now now PBNs and stuff like that." Uh, so it's not doesn't seem to be that new actually. Doesn't seem to be like that exciting etc it's just maybe it's been extended maybe and and the thing as well is that this message says it's a manual action right so i don't think it's the cause of an algorithm or something like that it's just this guy's been spotted it's been reported whatever it is uh how google found out and just the guy at the spam team is like oh like this guy is selling links boom just like apply this and then the links don't really uh apply the algorithm and to be honest it's quite nice from google to not kill his search traffic um 
in the past they would probably have destroyed his search traffic as well or like de-indexed it completely for pure spam or something so i think uh i think it's actually google's becoming less hard if anything like if you're selling and the funny part it's, is it's, it's maybe though a better way of targeting people who are are acquiring these links the people who are benefiting yes. them because because they don't know about it you know if your exactly. your site gets a manual action i was going to lose that. all your traffic you sure as hell know about it right but if you if the sites you're getting links from or buying links from or whatever you're doing to get them are having these penalties then you're you're unaware that, that they're not having any effect from you which begs the question if you're buying links from a big link seller, how many of them are actually doing any good or not? Um, how do you even measure that? I don't, don't think it's possible. That's what people were saying on Twitter. There was a joke as well that Forbes probably has 10,000 of them because like so many links have been sold on Forbes, etc. cetera. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, it's, it's quite interesting to see that. But like, yeah, it means uh, that probably a lot of sites do have that. Although. I did talk to some anonymous link sellers and they say that, you know, sites they work with haven't been affected, no, like no single one of them, etc. Um, that being said, if you're a site that's had this penalty and someone's buying links from you, would you voluntar vol voluntarily tell them that you've had this? Because exactly. it just ruins you, the marketability of you selling links. Just FYI, to clarify anyone who's watching this for the first time, we don't advocate selling links, we don't advocate buying links, we oh, do yeah, it the old-fashioned way so um that's kind of like our position we understand some people are different and take different perspectives this is perhaps one of those situations where we're seeing like a real possible negative effect of of that that approach but again still a lot of unknowns yeah uh, the thing as well is it's coming at an interesting time right because um i can't remember i think it's on march 1st but i'm not 100 percent sure where no follow doesn't become uh, an instruction to Google, but rather a hint to Google, um, which is slightly different. Um, and uh, I'm sure Google's enforced that already, but like the official date is like really soon. Uh, and I know that Carroof has done tests and actually he found that seems like uh, this relic was sponsored and relic uh what is the other one? There's relic was sponsored and there's another UGC, one. Basically the user generated UGC content. Seem to be passing some link juice. So I, I almost half expect that like no followings will also pass link just if Google decides it. But it's like Google gets to decide to get the final word on this versus you had the final word, no follow was a hard action that Google would respect regardless of whether they agree with it or disagree with it. Uh, so it's quite. Here's why yeah. I think that is. So one of the negative consequences f of this whole kind of uh, negativity around guest posting or around um, hosting guest posts, linking out to other people. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, a lot of people in comments are saying, oh, should I just no follow all my links and, and, and this kind of thing? Or should I build guest posts? Should I actively try and build guest posts which are only no follow? Is that safer? Right, a lot of confusion. Uh, and this kind of stems out of the fact that there are numerous bad actors at play here. So there are people who uh, get guest posts on a site and then instead of making a high quality post with a uh, somewhat organic link to, to the website or whatever, they instead are trying to stuff it full of spammy links to all their clients or their specific organizations like we talked about Forbes, uh, big sites which are targeted, right? There are moles in there. There are interns who are yes. on the payroll of these SEO companies. There are entirely made up persona of like fake authors who have multiple columns across multiple websites and fake LinkedIn profiles, like really complicated, like black hat kind of shit. Um, very smart though. Like I, I, I'm, I'm like, it's quite impressive. Like how some of this stuff, so how far people go for this. Actually, uh, I can tell the story about this because, uh, my fiance, she used to do that. She used to do link building for a while. And, uh, at some point she built a persona. It's been a while and it's been several years. She built a persona in the event industry and uh, like she was like, she found like a really good author. She was working with him, kind of like walking her way up, like PR style in this uh, to the point where her fake persona, and I'm not going to give the name, uh, literally got, was invited to like speak at conferences and do all that stuff, wow. etc. And uh, and like all of this was completely fake with a stock photo, right? Um, <laughs> so. So yeah, it is. Um, it just is just it for is, the avoidance of doubt, we're not recommending you do this, by the way. No, it's something that was done a while ago in another company. Because this exists and because this phenomena exists, 
it gets expensive and time consuming for these organizations like Forbes to police. So it's often easier for a director or a manager to just make the decision like, okay, let's just no follow all links. And yes. I don't think that it's helpful for the internet if certainly for the good actors in play, I don't think it's helpful for them if everyone just no follows links. So I'm wondering if this Google finally admitting that they're that's not adhering to the no follow fully is maybe a consequence of an over overreaction of no following if that makes sense and so mm -hmm. that they're they're then gonna like take it at read it and like accept it but then still make their own mind google will still make their own mind up about whether or not to yeah. follow whether how much link used to pass um and, and, and that kind of thing because yeah. you can see if some uh, a massive algorithm as complex as the, the google search algorithm it would probably make sense that it's not a binary thing do i follow or do i not there's probably like some kind of like scale like how much do I do I trust this? How how much should I follow this? Uh, and they they probably got their own kind of mechanism to to determine that. So I think it reminds me of the um, like marijuana in Europe, for example. Like people like there's basically the law and there's like the reality of the market. Like you, you go in France, like I think they're like the second biggest uh, smokers in the world or something like that. But it's completely illegal to own any, for example. Mm -hmm. And it, you know. It's the same with paid links, right? I think Google is just waking up to the reality of the market, which is people just buy links. And, uh, and they're like, well, then that's fine. Then you, you should do these things. But to be honest, it, we're just going to take matters in our own hands yeah. and get to decide in the end. And kind of like, uh, you know, if these r same, the test from Caruf was like route sponsor links past links. Well, I think that's adjusting to that reality of the market as well. Um, but it gives them more control, right? Because if they push people to tag these things, then they're able to first train algorithms to recognize what would be a paid link, what would not be a paid link. Uh, they're able to modulate their power. So maybe this has 100% power now, but like this becomes a problem in three years. And then they're like, okay, well, sp really cool sponsor links just dialed back to only 50% power so that we can, and then non like normal links just get 100% power and just rebalances the rankings, etc. So um, it gives them more tools to rebalance the algorithm to do that. And it also trains machine learning algorithms by incitating people to at least tag the paid links so that uh, they're able to better understand it and make that decision in a better way in the future once the data set is big enough, basically. Um, I also want to add that uh, a lot of people hadn't seen this before, so like an outbound link, a manual outbound link penalty. Uh, and so part of, part of the, I guess, confusion is because that appeared to, be a new pe appeared to be a new thing to a lot of people, at least going by some of the comments, yeah, they they it could sort of made them more certain that this was specifically about guest posting or whatever. Um, this is not a new thing. This has been going on for a long time. There's a, a really interesting thread on the Google support forums of all places, uh, where a fairly innocent person had a like a health and beauty blog, and he got this this message. He got this issue, and they they posted about it. Like, what do I do? And people were commenting and, and, and essentially, eventually um, John Mueller came in and he said, and I quote, there is absolutely no need to no follow every link on your site. So let that sink in. Yeah, yeah. However, however, those that are there because of an exchange, such as a product or service for a review, should have a round no follow on links to yeah. that product, to their sales page, and any social media profiles that are linked because of the review. So mm -hmm. reading between the lines, what was going on here was that health and beauty sites, getting free products, writing reviews about those products, and do follow it, or not no following the, the links to, to that website, um, thus causing a problem. Uh, yeah. Reconsideration requests submitted and problem solved. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a big issue. Um, I do think a lot of people are going to buy links that don't help anymore, though. I do think, like... Say, like well, the, I, I guess they've been doing that for four years already, right? Yep. So, I guess I want to go back to the main question uh, to, like, slowly get to the bottom of this, which is, well, like, first of all, is guest posting affected? What should people do? And then let's talk about what I just mentioned, which is the situation of, like, paid links, etc. Like... Uh, are people just buying links that do nothing? And like, how how would you ever know that this is happening? Like, because I know a lot of people who listen just buy links, and it's the reality of the market sure. again. Um, 
So what's the plan? Because the thing is, like, my dignity was like, oh, like, if the site has traffic, then it's probably good. It probably means that um, Google likes the site, so you get good things. Maybe your reaction to that, to be honest, is kind of like a direct reaction. It's like, no, these sites keep their traffic, but the links don't count anymore. <laughs> so, like, you guys can actually tell if we still like these sites or not, and if we cut them. And then the incentive of the site owner is to not tell people. Correct. And you have no way of, of, of knowing because there's no outward change or no outward metric that you can you can measure to to, mm -hmm. to understand what's going on here so where that leaves us is we're in a landscape where you don't know if a guest post from a specific site is going to be good or bad based on any kind of seo metrics or there's yeah. no tool which can tell you this so what does that leave us with well how how can we determine whether a site is good or bad well i, I guess that's like a i mean first of all you can't Exactly, you're, you're, you can have uh, an educated guess based on their kind of editorial standards, uh, site age, site design, site size, a whole host of factors about whether it just seems like a legitimate entity or kind of fly by, fly by night organization, who else they're linking to, these kinds of things. But it, it's, it's very difficult to know for sure. But what that does, that uncertainty, is that it will push people towards uh, Go to, or push people to stop going for guest posts on maybe questionable sites and only mm. go for like the super high end stuff, which is what get Google originally considers guest posting, not this, uh, you know, $5 sponsored post. That's a, uh, that's, they call it. I think it just post. increases the prices of ranking when you buy links from link sellers as well in general. Like it's just in general, like you can assume there's going to be like a percentage of junk in there. Like, I don't know, like 20%, 30%, 5%. I have no idea. But what I know is like some sites will be affected and you'll be paying for nothing. So like to get the same results, you just need to buy more. And I, I don't know if Google decides to push that more than that drunk percentage will just go higher, you know? Sure. Uh, and just to be clear, this is not something that's going to happen. This has already been happening for many yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, it's also worth saying, you know, if, if you have been buying links, which we don't recommend, just to reiterate, if you have been buying links from, uh, from other, other sites, and it's been working for you, then you must, at least up until this point, have been doing something right, at least in the algorithm up until this point. Uh, so it, even in that case, it's not necessarily a, a, it's not necessarily a situation where you need to change everything tomorrow. But I think as a best practice going forward over the medium to long term, it, it's probably you're going to have better results by going less for the low end, more for the high end in future. Yeah, I, I think also when you reach out to a site and they just send you their prices right away, like the chances are probably pretty high. Like, I, I mean, I don't even know if they're pretty, they're higher than a site that would not do that because like they, it might just be a 3% chance. I have no idea how many yep. sites are affected. So I'm, I'm trying to be careful this with my words. I'm trying to not do the same as what happened to this article. They, they, they would probably be higher. <laughs> this is also a good time, I think, to reemphasize the, the bad neighborhood effect. So getting links from, from shit sites who are doing dodgy stuff or selling links who are, uh, or even something which is not really a, that far on the dodginess spectrum, but like do following a link after getting a free product uh, from, from the, the owner, that is increasingly gonna be risky or not effective. Um, but you gotta ask yourself, like how, <laughs> How many sites have this penalty and continue to sell guest posts knowingly uh, to link sellers? And link sellers have a, a limited pool because there are a limited number of sites out there who, um, who, who sell these things, right? Who sell guest posts on their sites. So uh, I, I feel like there's th this pool, which isn't really growing that much. It's just like the amount of people effect infected by the, this outbound link penalty is probably going to increase over time just through the bad neighborhood effect. Uh, so I feel like there's a whole analogy with the coronavirus right now, the same <laughs> thing, it's quite interesting. Um, but uh, okay, so how do people not get caught by this kind of bullshit news in the future? So the, the question, how, how, a better question to ask is like, how do you apply critical sense to, to SEO? You should do uh, politics in the future. You take my question and you just like change it. And you're like, no, that's a bad question. Let me just ask myself the question that you should ask. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 
I think it all comes back to trying to be as objective and scientific as possible. So look at the original information, not what commentators are saying. If you see someone posting, is guest posting dead? Uh, with a link to search engine, watch or journal or whatever it is. Uh, go read that article. Search engine watch right? just started hating us now. We already had one enemy from this podcast. Now we have <laughs> oh dear. Uh, go read that article. Don't just read what, peop- what the person posting the article posted in their two sentences on Facebook. Read that article and then is the information coming from a specific source? If yes, go read that source. And that's the key. Get back to the source, get back to the facts, get back to the original information, not what other people are commenting or other people what are saying about it. Take everything with a pinch of salt. So in this case, the individual who was affected by this uh, manual notice, he said, he, he basically said, this is all about guest posting for sure, for sure, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, and interpretation, okay. take interpretation out, focus on the facts. Uh, although to, to be fair, you know, he knows his site, no one else knows his site. So he has yeah, more true. information than us. So he, he is better placed to actually make that call. Right. But, and this is a big, but you have to look at also the individual, like wh- what type of person, what type of personality do they have? Um, what have they done in the past? What kind of posts do they make in the past? Are they, um, you know, massively into conspiracy theories and this, this kind of thing, because that affects how people make decisions. Mm. Some people are okay with like not knowing exactly what's going on and just being like, okay, well, I, I can't be sure. So it's one of these things I'll keep monitoring and move on. Other people have this inclination that they have to know why this is happening. Why, why, why? And they will create a narrative in their mind and they will uh, basically build the world, their worldview around them to support that. Backwards rationalize everything that happens to for this one thing that they thought to make sense. And nothing you I can tell I'm adding them otherwise. This to the, I'm adding this to the philosophy podcast <laughs> as well. <laughs> nothing you can tell them otherwise will will convince them. Uh, no amount of, of evidence e- either way. And we, we don't, let's be honest, we don't have much much evidence here. So, yeah, it's a it's a so questionable one, for sure. Uh, I think it's also very important to be aware of the different motivations that different people along the the news cycle, the news chain have. Uh, and I'm looking specifically here at, at Search Engine jo- Journal and the uh, the author Roger mm-hmm. Monty. Uh, so if you actually go to Roger's site, which is I'm not going to say it, but it, it says his tagline is "Stirring things up since 2000." So You're like, what is what does that tell you? Maybe he's a bit of a shit stir. Maybe he, he admits it himself. Uh, what is the motivation of Search Engine Journal? Are they trying to um, give the best information possible? Well, you know, to an extent, yeah. I mean, they want to give good information. I think they have a good intention. For I, sure. I don't think they are like evil, you know, like. For sure, for it's sure. And just execution. I'm not saying for a second that they, they are evil, uh, but their business is to get build engagement, get traffic, get clicks, get people to yep. view their their content. So. The more sensationalized uh, they make their content, the more clicks they get, um, the better you know their metrics are. The more traffic, the more ads they sell, um, etc. So, and I, I'm not saying that any of these one things is like the the underlying factor of what's going on here. That could be that could make up like one percent of the reason all this kind of stuff happened. But you just got to be aware of all these. Uh, different motivations as well. The author also runs a penalty recovery business. Um, That's you know, handy. So uh, again, is there something to play there? Maybe not, right? Maybe again, he's just made a mistake, and we're we're the assholes here for like calling him out or trying to call him out. Um, in, in which case, I apologize, but uh, you know, it's just one extra thing to to consider. Uh, and and you, I'm speaking to you as an individual listener here, um, have to. Be aware of all these things and and kind of like make a snap judgment about what's going on, but not pigeonhole yourself too much into you creating that as the reality and still being opening to new information coming in, uh, changes to that, which changes fundamentally what you previously thought. Uh, And finally, uh, to apply critical sense, 
just be very very careful about what people post on social media because <laughs> generally they, they haven't spent two and a half hours reading the backstory and like try, finding the source information and talking to people who uh who who were affected by this they just read the high, uh, headline on search engine journal or scanned the h2s yeah. and, and and posted it it reminds me of a meme i saw on social media the other day where it was like uh, how we treat information and there was like oh in the 90s we would trust leading scientists in the uh, 2000 we trust phds and phd students and then after 2010 karen on facebook you know and it's like that's that's a little bit what's happening here as well and it's like i'm i'm not trying to like discredit the groups they're really good actually there's a lot of cool groups and you should check them out and seo signals up honestly one of the best free groups you can join highly recommend you check it out um but you need to understand there's people of all levels with all sorts of beliefs that will post there and there's no um there's not a strong editorial filter here everyone can it's free to speak and it's fine but you it means it's your job to apply critical sense to what you see in front of and you and not just take it and absorb it you know and just for the the um the sense of balance as well uh to anyone listening to that that also applies to anything which gail or i say i mean yeah what exactly. we're, what's coming out of our mouth we try and make it as accurate and, and genuine as possible but we're human beings at the end of the day. We have our own inherent biases. We make mistakes all the time. Um, if, you, if you spot us making a mistake, we will gladly apologize for it if you point it out to us and you know, we, we understand it to be a mistake. Uh, we'll, we'll change our content where possible if, if this kind of thing uh, happens. Also, someone's ability, how they handle making mistakes is, is another indicator of, of their credibility, but it's just one indicator. It doesn't mean because we're trying to be honest about that, that everything we say is, is genuine again, because there'll, there'll always be mistakes which we, we make. And as an individual in the world of SEO, which is inherently dealing with imperfect information, you don't know how Google works exactly, you don't know what it, what it knows, you don't know whether the links you're getting now are gonna work or not. Uh, you just have to kind of be okay with that and keep going forward and keep applying the best practices that you know while taking everything with a pinch of salt and, and, and trying to understand what's really going on without um, creating a false narrative in your mind. Yeah, it is tricky. Uh, I think we're gonna close it here. I think, uh, I think that is enough. I don't want to spend two hours on this. Uh, so thank you for listening. We will be linking to everything either in the YouTube video description or we will be linking to everything in the podcast show notes, which uh, you will find uh, you will find on the website. So you can go to toyhacker.com, click on the little bell, and you will see the latest podcast there. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, let us know in the comments. I'm quite interested to know if you want us to react more to the news, etc. Uh, and if you enjoy this content a lot, then don't hesitate to subscribe, hit the bell, uh, or subscribe on the audio channels, so iTunes, Google Podcast. Spotify, all of that, everything, it's all there. Uh, that you can get it in whatever format you want, this kind of content. We have one a week. I know we missed the mark on Monday, but we, we're working on that, guys. We're going to fix that. So thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed that. Have a good week, and see you later. Woo!